All right, welcome to today's lecture. We're going to be talking about a procedure that treats lumbar spinal stenosis. So how do you know if you have lumbar spinal stenosis? Well, the simple way is you either have an MRI or a CAT scan of your back, and that would show if you have stenosis. Stenosis is essentially a narrowing of the spinal canal. It's caused by a combination of degenerative disc disease along with arthritic changes in the back. Pretty much happens to everybody to some degree over time just from wear and tear on our spines. Now, how does spinal stenosis present? Um, spinal stenosis presents typically with pain with standing, alleviated with bending forward um, and flexing or sitting. So the, the prototypical patient is the person who's at the store, leaning on the shopping cart, walking around the store. Uh, in our business, we call that the shopping cart sign. And it's a pretty typical sign of someone with stenosis. Now, we have new procedures out, and that's what we're going to talk about today, which is the VertiFlex procedure. Now, before you jump into something um, invasive, normally patients will try physical therapy first. You know, you can do medications, Advil's a leave. So we're assuming that you're past that point in the process here. And we're also assuming that you've probably tried an epidural injection or two at this point. Maybe the epidural helped, but it didn't last or it didn't give very much relief. Um, or you've just done enough of them where, you know, you feel like you don't want to just keep injecting yourself with steroids, which can have long-term effects as well. Now, 14 million people in the U.S. have spinal stenosis. So this is a pretty common diagnosis. And so new treatments are important, and I'm here to educate on that. So let's dive into the VertiFlex procedure. Um, so this company was taken over by Boston Scientific um, in the last couple of years, and they've done an excellent job of training physicians. So starting with a small incision in the back, this whole thing can be done with about a two-inch incision. Um, in the back. So that's going to be done specifically over the level of stenosis, um, typically L3-4, L4-5. Now this technique does not work for L5-S1 um, because as you'll see in the pictures, you need two spinous processes in order to situate the device. But you start with a little skin incision. This is done with twilight anesthesia doesn't require general anesthesia. So first step there was basically just opening up the space. So we basically numbed up the area, the patient's asleep at this point, and we've um, inserted the device there to open up the spinal canal. That's gonna unscrew and we're gonna verify under x-ray. So in the picture on the left of the screen, you'll see the side view picture. Um, showing that it's between the spinous processes. And then in the right picture, you see that you're straight on between the two spinous processes. All right, so then there's a little tool that just cleans out any excess tissue. And then there's a sizer that goes in. Now this is important because this device is not a one size fits all. And that's important because you want something that's the perfect size for your spinal canal. So this device comes with a um, measuring tool um, that allows us to see exactly uh, what size device you need. So once we've measured, we pick out the uh, appropriate device for your measurement. And essentially that's going to get dropped into the opening and then cranked open. And once you see it deployed like that, um, in the open position, then it's advanced forward a little bit. Basically, you pat it down till it's really seated in position. And what that's doing is it's pushing the two spinous processes apart so that the canal stays as open as possible. Now, it's not going to push it apart to the point where you're going to be like hunched forward with the device. It straightens you out just enough that you can walk straight um, without being pushed forward, but enough that you keep your spinal canal open um, 
and allow you to walk better. So once we get everything in position, the device is deployed, everything's taken out, and essentially you're left with that um, spacer device in there. A lot of data has come out of this. This has been um, studied for about the last five years now. So we've got good long-term data on the device, significant reduction in pain symptoms, improvement in functioning, reduction in opioid use, um, and again, this has been studied out five years now. So what are some of the risks and complications of a procedure like this? Well, anytime you make an incision, small risk of bleeding, small risk of infection. So you do have a little bit of wound uh, management issues, but usually the incision's small enough that you don't even need stitches. Um, you can close it with glue and steri strips. Uh, small risk of fracture from the device, especially if somebody's severely osteoporotic. Um, so you got to watch out for, for risk of fractures there. And then you want to make sure that there isn't too much slippage in the spine, um, that the vertebrae aren't sliding too far forward on each other. So part of the pre-op workup for this would be to get x-rays. Um, of the patient's back so that you can assess when they're bending and when they're straightening um, if the spine is slipping. Now, beyond this, there's obviously surgical options. Um, this is not really meant to replace surgery. What it is is a technique for people that either very much don't want surgery or people that are too ill to have surgery. So, in the older patient population, people with heart issues, lung issues, that may not tolerate a big operation, this could be a simple fix to markedly improve their function um, without as much risk of surgery. But clearly there's patients where, you know, definitive surgery is the way to go. Um, this is more for people who either are not candidates for surgery or really don't want surgery. So nice technique, um, good option for long-term results for people with chronic low back pain with uh, lumbar spinal stenosis and radiculopathy. In order to be a candidate for this, you have to have pain withstanding alleviated by either bending forward or sitting down. If you have pain all the time, meaning sitting, standing, lying, um, and it never goes away, that's not the procedure for you. Um, so just to make that clear, who's a candidate, who's not a candidate. Uh, in terms of recovery, you're talking about, you know, going home the same day um, with a little dressing on the back. Obviously, you're going to have to keep it clean and dry. You can't submerge it in water. But, you know, I have people back in action two or three days after this. I wouldn't go play golf in two days. You know, I'd probably give it a week or two. Um, but you can do normal daily activities within a day or two of this. You just want to be careful of extreme bending, heavy lifting, um, which could dislodge the device. But once it seats in the place, that's very secure um, and unlikely to have to come out. These can be removed. So if for some reason um, you needed to go in surgically, there is a way to remove the device. Um, so they can be taken out if needed. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post comments on there. Please don't put any protected patient information on there, um, but happy to answer your questions. Please like the video. Please follow us. Thank you for your time.